Annalise was born on January 8th, 2014, which was the day before the uh, announcement of the water crisis, um, which means that they had bathed Anna in the water, uh, not knowing that it was contaminated. And I was not able to take a bath or shower due to the fact that I had a C-section on the 8th. Um, and then I had some blood pressure issues, so I was not able to get up out of bed. Uh, about an hour before I was able to get up and take my shower, I was so excited to get my shower um, after having her, and, and I was miserable the day before. Um, about an hour before I was supposed to be able to do that, they announced that there was an issue with the water, and we weren't allowed to drink it. We weren't allowed to bathe in it. We weren't allowed to use it, period. As a matter of fact, they came through and they turned all the water off in the hospital rooms. Um, so you couldn't, you didn't even have a chance of turning it on um, because they didn't know what the smell was going to do. They didn't know um, what it would, what kind of problem it would cause if you even put your hand in it. So everybody just turned it completely off. and we They brought every hospital room two bottles of water and some washcloths that you add water to to be able to clean yourself with. Mind you, I, I had had a c-section the day before and have not showered so um, it was it was miserable and I was already feeling pretty disgusting at this point and was ready for my shower, more than ready for my shower. Um, I'm nursing, or was nursing, um, Anna, and I had been drinking the water all day long, I mean, tons of water. I had probably drank at least a gallon of water because I was so thirsty, and I was start, you know, just now starting to nurse, and you drink a lot more water. Um, so that's been, you know, that was definitely the first thing I thought of. Um, was, oh, I've been drinking this water, and oh, they've bathed my daughter in it. Water. She was really red. I have five children. She's my fifth. Um, so I've had experience with newborns, and none of my children have been this red. She was blood red with splotches all over her. And it did go away when she was a couple of weeks old, but it it was really bad, and they just said it was just normal um, newborn skin. I'm still angry about it. I, um, it, it was supposed to be a super happy time, and, and it was a super happy time, but then there was all this fear that came along with it. Um, including just the ride, the ride home with her. It, everything was just so weird, and it was, it was something I'll never forget. But that doesn't mean that doesn't not in a good way. I delivered her at Thomas Memorial Hospital in South Charleston, West Virginia, and so when we came home, we came through St. Albans um, on Corkle Avenue, Route 60, right off the river. Um, when we were driving through, it was just it was just an eerie, eerie feeling. Um, the fog was coming off the river, which is you know kind of normal sometimes in January. But there was this horrible, horrible, really strong odor um, that was overpowering. I it choked me. Um, I just wanted to protect her from it. And 
that's all I could think of is just, oh my goodness, let's just get through here. And I even told my husband at one point, you know, drive fast, just get us out of here. And I, I remember just taking my hands and just putting them kind of over her face just to try to shield her somehow from, from it, which didn't help at all, but made me feel a little bit better, like I was doing something to protect her. Um, it was, it, it was just a horrible, eerie, eerie feeling. It was supposed to be, you know, a happy time bringing your baby home from the hospital. And uh, it was it was one of the scariest days of my life. And at that time, what did you even know about the chemical or what was going on? We really didn't know. I mean, we really didn't know much. All we knew is there was a chemical that had been spilled into the water. We had probably drank it. And um, they just kept saying that it, it was non-toxic. But, um, the smell surely didn't smell non-toxic to me. I mean, when we were in the hospital, they came, they turned off all the water spigots. You weren't allowed to, I mean, they did not want any chance of you touching this water whatsoever. And so, to tell you that it's non-toxic, but to take those precautions, um, kind of tells you otherwise. I actually have a condition on my hands that I sometimes think that may be caused from it because I had never had an issue until I had her um, and it won't go away and doctors can't seem to figure out the right cream that'll help or anything. So. Well, I really feel like when you go to a doctor and say that you think it might be from this situation, that they just kind of look at you and laugh. Um, they, they think that you're either just trying to get attention or find someone to blame where, you know, that's just not who I am whatsoever but I just know that I have a hand condition now that I a skin condition on my hands that I never had before and it won't go away and nobody can tell me what it is so um I believe he should definitely be held accountable. Um, I've heard that he didn't want his own personal vehicles and certain things like that being taken. And I think that, you know, we had, look at the things that we had taken from us, you know, um, moments that we'll never get back.